Hey guys, this is Max Headspace 9mm, and I promised you a long time ago, several years ago, that I would show you my AK collection. Well, that's what I'm going to do today. There's quite a few. This could stand to be a long video, so just be patient. So, we'll start from smallest and go to the big ones. So far, in the beginning, we're going to show uh, 762 by 39 variants. This is a Micro Draco, one of my favorite, most fun guns that I own. It is just such a cool small package. And even though it's small, better take it seriously, it packs a wallop. Now a lot of people don't take these seriously, you know? They don't take them as seriously as the bigger AKs. But this is an answer to a problem. It actually is a serious gun that is used in, uh, in certain circles of the world. And it fills the place of something like this. You look at these guys, you know, everybody loves the P90. Well, this gun here, it shoots a less expansive round that packs a bigger wallop. And if you use a drum, like I just showed you, it'll hold even more than the P90. I love the P90, don't get me wrong, it's a great gun. But uh, this is not to be taken lightly. This is probably one of the most cool AKs that I've had a lot of fun with. Uh, this is Romanian. Now, this, actually let me show you this. This was a little bit bigger version. Actually, I got this earlier. I've had this the longest of just about any of my AK pistols. And this thing is phenomenal. It's got a hinge top cover. It's, uh, it's a Zastava made in Serbia. Heavy, heavy receiver. It's a stamped receiver, but it's a heavy gauge metal. And uh, this bolt, I don't know what they make it out of, but it's never rusted. It's been out in the rain many times. And this is a great gun. I've had a lot of fun. The very first video I posted to YouTube, I was shooting this gun at nighttime. And the ball of fire that came out of it was awesome. And of course, all these will take these amazing magazines. And they just look so cool. I think they look better than a Tommy gun, to be honest with you. Now, I got another one of these guns. I liked it so much. And this is what it turned into. See, you could take AKs and you could do a lot of things with them. If you want to be able to get a cheek weld, why, well, you need a pistol arm brace. This one's on a folder. And this one has a rail. It has a Magpul forend, which is better for ventilation. It's got this uh, flash hider on here, which also sends the shock wave forward, which is a good thing when you're shooting this because they are loud when they have a short barrel. And um, yeah, I can't say enough how important this muzzle device is. It's incredible. It really does a number on not only the sound to the shooter, but it kills flash really, really well. Okay, next. What are we going to do? What's next? Well, I did a video called World's Greatest AK about my Mac 90. Chinese have made more AKs than any other nation on the planet. Uh, the Type 56, you know, that they were, they were sporting in the uh, Korean War and then into Vietnam. And they have made a lot of AKs. And what they did was they put their own spin on the AK rifle, as every nation did, which is why I like collecting them. Every nation creates their own version of the AK. We here in America have a hard time conceptualizing a world without copyright laws. Well, Mikhail Kalashnikov, which invented these rifles in the very beginning and established their, um, their victory in uh, Russia to be used as the military rifle in 1947 said a Russian AK is the only true AK. All others are copies. And that's basically true. These are all copies, but they're all really good copies. So the Chinese, what they did that's really cool. Now this is a Mac 90. This came about as a way of getting around the stupid laws that our Congress put in place to destroy these kind of guns and the fun that they, they represent. So this is a plastic stock and it's very comfortable, very efficient, and I've used it. I could put a wood stock on here and make this look more authentic, but I actually really like this a lot. So 
what the Chinese did was they used gun bluing, and this is a milled receiver. I also have a stamped receiver I'm gonna show you next, but they would put some tooth on the metal. They would actually use uh, like a belt sander and sand the surface instead of polishing it or sandblasting it. And that gave fine micro scratches in the metal. And then when they blued it, the bluing had some crevices to hide in. And if it got scratched up and needed to be, you know, made new again, all you have to do is take some bluing and rub it down with that again. So it's a very practical solution and much less expensive, much more simple and easier to repair than a lot of the fancy, you know, new finishes that they put on AKs in other nations. Um, beautiful wood foregrip. You notice that uh, Chinese Max have the holes up here to allow some of the debris to get out. It does actually make a difference in how often you have to clean this gun. And um, they had a fully enclosed front sight post with that ring around it, which is kind of interesting. Very iconic looking, actually. Um, the Chinese rifles are just well built. They're a little heavier than most, but not noticeably so. And they are built really, really rugged. They put a lot of metal in here and it's good quality steel. Don't believe what people say if they tell you that Chinese rifles aren't good. They're some of the best in the world. Um, let's see, what else? Well, I'm gonna move forward. Yeah, oh, this, like the next AK I'm gonna show you that are both Max, uh, came out of the Circle uh, 386 factory. Now that's a famous um, manufacturing facility in China, enormous gun factory. And they make Norinco and Polytech rifles, which are regarded by many as some of the very best in the world. Okay, this gun you might recognize if you're into zombie culture and zombie lore and zombie TV shows. A very similar gun to this was uh, carried around by somebody you probably know from video games and so forth. This is also a Chinese Norinco Mac 90. This one has a stamped receiver with that same gun blowing finish. It has the same hooded front sight, beautiful woodwork. Everything about this is really cool. Beautiful gun. And the way this bayonet works is really quite simple. This is called a pig sticker. It's not a knife, it's an actual poker. And it's the way those long, um, old assault rifles used to be back in the day before the removable bayonet was put into place. Like, uh, like you'd probably see on the old Russian guns, you know, the really, really old ones. Uh, they had to remove them and put them on manually. This one is just a swing around kind of adaptation. So this is stamped. And both of them are made in the same factory in China. Okay, all right. So now I showed you a little while ago a Zestava. This is another one. This is another product from Serbia. It is an underfolder. And these are beautiful guns. The beautiful woodwork, it's, it's a lighter gun than the others. It can be folded down to very small. And um, this is an AB2. I think that when they created these guns in, uh, in Serbia, they, they had two different kinds. And they used them for paratroopers and land forces and different kinds of things. And, you know, this is basically a beautiful version of it. It has a beautiful finish. Everything about it is just top notch. Of course, I put a, I love the Hogue grips. I like the rubber. A lot of these come with uh, plastic or wooden grips that are just not all that comfortable. And uh, I keep those. I could put them back on if, if I ever go to sell it. This has a cleaning rod built in. It has a slant muzzle brake. And a lot of people think that these things are crooked. They're actually twisted this way because if you're a right-handed shooter and you are firing this gun, the tendency without any muzzle brake at all is to go up and to the right because your body is down and to the left. That's where the mass is that holds this thing back. So recoil goes up and to the right. And that's why this brake is at that funny angle. It exactly uh, pushes in the opposite direction 
and does a really good job of keeping that force at bay. And of course, like the others, it'll take this drum. Of course, you can't fold the stock up with this drum in there, but it sure does look cool. I love that. This one has an interesting little magazine release that you can use with your trigger finger. So that's cool. All right, we're not even halfway. I hope you're not bored yet. I hope you're enjoying this. Okay, here's another one from the Sestava factory. This is also an underfolder. This one's been modernized just a little bit. It has a railed fore end on it. This one is a heavier gauge gun. Uh, the receiver is a little bit thicker. The trunnions are built a little bit tougher. And they're basically designed to resist a tremendous amount of force because what they actually do with these is they take and jam these into the earth. They can take this right here. I don't even know if I can get it to go up anymore. This is a valve right here. They put a valve on their gas block, which shuts off the gas entirely. Because what they do is they slip a grenade launcher into the barrel, and when they fire it, this gun withstands a tremendous amount of force launching a grenade some distance. So this is kind of like a portable mortar that the, uh, that the soldiers can use. It also has a cleaning rod built in, um, you know, I put an ALG trigger on here. Um, some of these have a lot of modifications. Some are left pretty much as they came from the factory. I just like AKs. They're just awesome. Okay, my very first, my very first build that I ever did. This is a Sega. This was, it came into America as a very sporterized gun. It looked like a hunting rifle for the most part with a Monte Carlo stock, no pistol grip. I had to move the trigger back. I got this beautiful billet trigger guard here and a hogue grip. Um, this is a folder and it makes the gun very small. You know, I could put it on a sling and carry it quite easily in confined spaces in vehicles or what have you. And, um, this also has an ALG trigger on it. And this is a really awesome handguard. I wish they still made these. This is kind of a Galil handguard. It's vented in the top. And this is probably the most comfortable handguard I've ever put on a AK that was plastic. It never gets hot, no matter how much I shoot it. This, um, this buttstock is a Carolina Raptor stock. And they stopped making these a couple years after I put it on here. This is one of the most beautiful pieces of billet AK technology that I've ever seen, and I absolutely love this thing. It is laser accurate. This was what made me fall in love with Russian AKs, and why I have Russian AKs more than any other kind in my collection. And that is from the um, Izmash factory in Russia. And that's the factory that uh, Mikhail Kalishnikov developed this design in the very first place, and he worked there throughout the rest of his life, uh, building and promoting AK rifles and AK variants. Okay, so this is kind of an interesting, this is a Sega as well. This I have not changed at all, nothing. This is as it came, and this was pre-Obama mandate that we don't get any more things like this from Russia. So they were sending these over somewhat changed with the pistol grip and everything. I kind of like this fore end. It's actually very ergonomic. This is a Sega 223. This uh, shoots the American round. They, they built them in all different kinds of uh, rifles that shoot lots of different calibers and shotguns as well. So uh, they really wanted to sell to Americans and they really made a lot of different variants. And this thing is crazy fun. This is crazy accurate. It is easy to shoot and comfortable. It has a 20 inch barrel. And it, this, the reason I like this so much, it, for collectors, this is an interesting piece because it has the full auto bolt carrier in it. 
Now it doesn't have the other full auto parts, but to somebody who is gonna make a post sample gun, this would be a very valuable piece to start um, doing that with. It shoots the 5.56 as well, but it's called the Sega 223. Okay, we're gonna take a break from Sega for a while um, and move over to this. This is probably my best shooting AK. This is an AK-74. A lot of people think, it's AK-74, you got that backwards. No, the AK-74 was the AK-47 reconfigured in 1974 to follow the logic that the United States had been using for almost 20 years. And that is that a lighter weight gun that shoots a lighter weight, smaller bore round that tr uh, travels faster, farther, and more accurately is a better option for soldiers in a wider variety of circumstances. So uh, this is a rifle dynamics gun. This gun is just so, so nice. It started its life as a Sega and it shoots the 545 round. And I just can't say enough about this. I have never had a hiccup with this gun. They put this really interesting gas block with the sight in it. I love the way that looks, it works phenomenal. Um, this is a 14 and a half inch barrel. This um, muzzle device is welded on, so it is actually part of the measurement of the barrel. So it's lightweight and comfortable, just super accurate. I absolutely love this gun. This is probably the most expensive gun in this collection. May not look like much, but man, it, it's a humdinger for sure. Okay, what now? Oh, all right, I'm gonna take a little departure here. Of all the guns, in my estimation of AKs, my two favorite are the Valmet and the Galil. I don't have a Valmet, but I do have a Galil. I love this gun. I love it. This is an amazing, amazing rifle. And what happens is you look at this gun and there's something about the way this gun looks. It's different from all the other AKs. First of all, it is a milled receiver. It's not as heavy as you would think it would be with metal everywhere. But this gun speaks of the horrible, horrific battles and wars that they have fought on the Golan Heights in the Middle East. This thing is just so incredible. It's just built to take punishment. There are videos of them torture testing these guns, shooting them until they're red hot and then throwing them in water and pulling them out and doing it over and over again. Um, it's got an 18 inch barrel, which is about ideal really to get the, the velocity. And this has a really long sight picture. So they put the sight on the dust cover. Some people say, oh, that's a bad thing to do. But this has a really long latch. And the reason why this is so long is it wedges into that hole and this dust cover does not rock in the least. Not in the least. Um, they've got a lot of really great innovations on here. Like being able to charge the weapon from above. I think that's great. Um, Handguard does not get hot no matter how much you shoot it. Fully ringed front sight. And this gun, I shoot more accurately with open sights than any other gun I own. There is something about the distance between these two sights and how you can take the aperture of the rear ring and put it around the outside of the front ring and find that pin right exactly in the center. I was, I was at a range one time shooting at an eight inch gong at 200 yards away with this gun, open sights. I wasn't resting on anything, I was just standing there like this. I hit it nine times out of 10, and I was firing about once every second and a half. That's all it took. And I was blown away, because that's better than I would do with an AR or any other gun that I have with open sights. There's something about the way these sights work that is phenomenal, and this is just a tremendous gun. I love this thing. Um, this is one of the best mag releases on any AK because I hate when people get these. I saw a guy on a video one time, 
he ground this to look more like normal AK mag releases. And I don't know why you would do that because the idea is that I'm gonna, I don't wanna drop this on the floor, but you push this with your trigger finger and you just give it a shake and the mag falls out. So it's really a beautiful design, very, very nice. Big mags, 50 rounders. These things are hard to come by now. Fortunately, I got mine a long time ago. So, one of my favorite AKs, and one I would probably never part with, not even for a Valmet. Okay, all right, now what are we gonna do? Let's see. Here's a really cool Romanian. I did a video about this where I was under the impression that it was an SAR-1. I found out um, by having it verified by other people, I was mistaken. This is not an SAR-1, this is a Romy G rifle. Now, to people who are builders, there were G kits coming into the United States years ago, and that was a particular kind of situation. People have built a lot of these AKs in the States from parts kits over the years. And then, mainly, this is because of American law and how our government makes it very challenging to get these guns. So this is a very lightweight rifle, surprisingly so. Um, actually really is, and it's made for this drum. This is a Romanian drum. So they look really good together, naturally. So this is a laminated wood stock, incredibly light, incredibly tough. It has a cleaning rod built in, it has a slant break, fantastic gun, it has a sight rail. All of these have these uh, optics rails over here in case you want to put a scope mount on it. In the buttstock is this little circle and you push this little spring-loaded door in and there is this little sausage inside. It poops out this thing here but what's inside of this is a cleaning kit. You've got a brush and a little uh, patch holder loop. It looks like the eye of a needle you know and they screw onto your cleaning rod. So in the field, you can maintain this gun. It's got everything you need. This is a great run for the hills rifle right here. Love this thing. And Romania makes beautiful, amazing guns. They're a little rougher around the edges, but they work and they're awesome and they're well thought out. Okay, so here's something. <clears throat> this is a, um, a Hellpup, a Polish Hellpup made from Polish parts. Now these have a bad reputation. A guy sold the, this to me because he was afraid of it blowing up. And I don't blame him because honestly, um, from what people say on the internet, a lot of these things do fall apart when you're using them. I looked it over really good when I got it from him and I, I, I make things for a living. So I can tell when a part is cast or when it is forged. This actually has forged trunnions as they're supposed to be. The ones that give trouble are cast. They tend to fail after a certain number of rounds. So this is a good one. Every part in here I've looked at very carefully and it's the good quality stuff. So I, I trust my life with it. It's, there's nothing wrong with this gun. But it's a Polish. It's the only Polish gun that I have in my collection. Uh, I've thought about making an SBR out of it. I might someday, but I don't shoot AKs that much anymore. It has this for hanging from a sling. Uh, you can basically walk around make a fashion statement like this is a necktie for, for radical right people, I suppose. Great gun. This has an interesting pronged flash hider. Um, works pretty good. Works as a bit of a bayonet. You could also cut wire with this. You just stab the wire between the forks and fire and you can get through a fence in pretty short order with that. We're getting somewhere. We're uh, about two thirds of the way there. Okay, oh, here's another. This is a really great Romanian gun. Uh, this is an M10, and this was made for the American marketplace. A lot of Romanian guns are not necessarily their military configuration. The one I showed you before is this one. This is configured just like the military would have carried it, but not this. This has an American buttstock, and this buttstock is spring-loaded. So actually, it's pretty comfortable to shoot. I didn't think that was ever a problem before, but you know, when you have a spring-loaded buttstock, it's pretty nice, I will tell you. 
comes with a quad rail on it, which is nice. You can put all your lights, lasers, um, optics, whatever you want on there. Uh, pronged flash hider and has a optics mount if you don't want to use the quad rail. Uh, it's a good gun. It's a real easy shooting gun. And for people that are shy of recoil, uh, this would be a phenomenal first AK. Nice, soft rubber butt pad. Great, great gun. I love this thing. Very reliable. Romanians know how to make an AK and they, they probably made more of them than Russia. I don't know. They were the first country after Russia to start making the AK. Uh, I think when they were communist, I think the Russians moved in there and taught them how to do it. So, next, oh, the Sega 12. So I got three Sega 12s to show you. This was my first. This came as a sporter, looked like a hunting shotgun. And of course I put on a AK buttstock, moved the trigger back, put on this grip, quad rail, you know, basically did all the work to this to make it 922R compliant. I don't want to go into what that's all about. It's just a regard, uh, regulation the government gives you that if you are going to change an AK or some other imported gun, you have to have a certain number of American parts on the gun for it to be legal. But I did a video, I did a number of, I think I did three videos about my Segas. If you're interested in the Sega 12s, go back and watch. There are a lot of different um, AK shotguns now. Lots and lots, but this was the original. This was the very first made in the in this um, the Ismash factory, and this is what started it all. And these have not been imported into the U.S. for quite a number of years now, probably about 10, 12 years, and that's why they're a bit of a collector's item now. They're phenomenal, and there's a lot of magazines you can get for these. And in my opinion, even though there's a lot of other choices out there, I still like the Sega's best. So this is what a Sega 12 looks like when it first comes in the country, or when it did. It just looks like a hunting gun, you know? And so what you have to do if you want it to look like what I did, is you remove this stock, you put on a different stock. You have to move the, the uh, trigger forward, and there's a whole bunch of stuff to take out of there. You gotta put a whole new trigger in. Fortunately, they made the receiver with the hole already in place for you and then you put your pistol grip on. There's a bunch of other things you can do too. Some people drill out their, um, drill out their, uh, the vent for their, uh, for their gas, but uh, I never did that. I never had a problem. When you get these, <clears throat> yes, they do require <laughs> about 500 rounds of break-in. They kick like a mule, and I don't know what it is, but right around 500 rounds, they even out, they smooth out, and these things start shooting like a dream. So, in my video about Sega 12 magazines, I start out shooting this one, and I basically stand stock straight without leaning forward at all, and it pushes me back. I did that on purpose to show that a brand new Sega without any modifications is a hard kicking gun. And then I followed up in the rest of the video with this guy. And you can see I'm just peeling off rounds as fast as I can pull the trigger and it doesn't push me back hardly at all. And then at the end I shoot a toilet until it's nothing but dust. It's a fun video, you should go look at it. It's, it's called uh, Sega 12 Magazine Review or something like that. So uh, here is something that is very unusual. Very hard to find these. Now there was a brief period of time when a company in, uh, a company in Las Vegas, named KVAR, was able to get permission for a small quantity, I think it was 500 of these uh, Sega 12s straight from Russia without going back and forth to hunting configuration and then you have to convert it. They'd been doing that for a long time and they basically were able to get them for, I think, law enforcement purposes or something like that. So they wound up getting these and this is sent to America in this configuration without any meddling, put together by Russians, just as it was meant to be. 
And so that's kind of a collector's item. I've only got about, I don't know, a dozen rounds or so through this. I'm keeping it just as is because these things are not that easy to find. Um, we know there's very few of them. All right, we're almost done here, almost done. This is the coup de gras. This is an AK, not by the strictest sense, but it is functionally an AK. This is a Romanian um, PSL. This is a long distance battle rifle, long range battle rifle. This shoots a cartridge uh, bigger than the other AKs. It's 30 caliber, but it's longer. It's the equivalent of what would be an American 308 round. It's the 7.62 by 54 R, R for rimmed, rimmed cartridge. And that is what they shoot out of the Mosin Nagant. So they have a lot of those in Russia. They wanted to keep using them. So they made a rifle that would shoot it because there's just probably billions of those rounds still in existence in the world. It has a long barrel. This thing is a monster. Uh, four power scope. And this is laser accurate. I mean, it looks kind of crude. It looks very, very much like a battlefield weapon. Uh, you might see this on a few video games. I don't know. Um, I've got everything with it. I've got thousands of rounds of ammo, and I've got this mag pouch. This is what the magazines look like. This is a 10-rounder. There's no ammo in this. But that's basically what the gun looks like. And this is a fun thing to shoot. I mean, it is, I've got my lens cover on, I'm not gonna take it off, but this thing is a real accurate sniper rifle or long range battle rifle. So they use these off of rooftops and across the plains, you know, they shoot these long distances. This thing will really reach out. All right. Now, after all this time and all these AKs, what do I think? Well, I used to shoot AKs a lot more. In fact, that's what I cut my teeth on for guns in general. I had like four or five AKs before I ever bought my first AR. And once I bought my first AR, I started to go back and forth and question, you know, do I really love AKs that much? Because AR started to grow on me. There's a lot of advantages to the AR-15. And I just started shooting ARs more and more, but I still collected the AKs. And um, so what do I think now? Well, I think as a collection, this hangs together really well. It's a beautiful grouping of guns with a lot of interesting features and characteristics. But I'll tell you something, in the evolution of firearms technology, in my opinion, the very, very best is something that I've gotten in the last couple of years that actually combines my favorite features on both the AR and the AK. I love the manual of arms of the AR. I love the charging handle and the piston of the AK. So this, in my opinion, is the ultimate. This is my go-to. I have never had an issue with this gun. I've shot thousands of rounds through this without a single malfunction of any kind. And I love it. It is reasonably lightweight. It's probably lighter weight than almost all of these AKs. It shoots the 5.56 round, which is plentiful and easy. It has, you know, pop-up sights if you wanna, if you wanna use these. I, got, I hardly ever use these sights. It's like I forgot how it works even. Because all I ever do is I use my, somebody tell me in the comment section how to pop up these sights. Um, there we go. So I use my scope with this and uh, it has pop up, a pop-up sight back here as well. So I don't make use of these very much. I have when I first got it before I got the scope on. Folding stock, charging handle on the left side, which I really love. I mean, what could be better than that? Um, the thing about the AK that I don't like so much is having to reach underneath and do this all the time. And that's fine, you get used to it. You get used to the rock and lock, you get used to all that stuff. But I always wanted something with left side charging. I almost bought an AK that had left side charging, but it just didn't seem right to me. So this 
in my opinion, is my go-to ultimate. For real defensive purposes and the defense of a nation, this would be my personal go-to. But I still love all my AKs and I love my ARs. So I hope you have enjoyed this interesting uh, collection and my thoughts about it. I want to continue this conversation in the comments section. I'd like to hear from you what is your favorite. I want to know if you want me to do a special video shooting that gun, talking about it, field stripping it, what have you. And uh, anything else you want to talk about. Because to me, the main reason I do YouTube is for the comments. So bring them at me. Thanks for watching. This is Max Headspace 9mm. Have a good one.